you know, we may not have a full on tropical depression or an invest area for that matter, but we do have this areas of a tropical disturbance towards the east of the Philippines and towards the west. That monsoonal gyre we were talking about yesterday. And plus this area right in here. And just like I mentioned yesterday, you know, these aren't going to get signal force warnings. I don't expect them to wrap up very tight, but they still could cause problems, which it also could be let people off guard because you're just not really expecting it. It doesn't get the hype, doesn't get the press it, that bigger storms get. This is out of Cagayan de Oro uh, in Mindanao, CDO here, where we had such heavy rains that it has been causing some pretty significant flooding over the course of the past 24 hours. And, you know, these rains are going to continue as we go ahead over the course of the week and into next week, slowly shifting towards the north as both of these systems kind of chug along here. First, you, of course, have that monsoonal gyre right in here, bringing the showers to the west coast of the Philippines. And then we're looking at this trough just moving along just like that across parts of the sides coming on shore in the late day in Samar area, and then eventually even past Manila. So it's a one-two punch with some heavy precipitation from both of these areas. Now, first course saturday and the sunday we have this area this isn't even really designated as an lpa more of a elongated trough but it is a disturbance that's going to lift towards an orb it kind of gets sucked in uh, to that monsoonal gyre which really is all a monsoonal gyre is kind of this funnel pulling in that precipitation so you kind of see it here that low trying to wrap up moving on shore south of hainan into northern vietnam while we have the secondary low just north of my head right here see it right there um coming on shore in late day in samar uh, the key thing and i don't think either of these the energy is kind of dispersed off between both of these um it's all about the rainfall with these. Uh, first off, you can kind of see that flow coming across the, the Indochina Peninsula, wrapping in just like that. And then here's our secondary trough kind of cruising up just like that. And then you would have the Westpac High uh, located just towards north of Guam, where both of these would just be kind of running around and uh, pulling in all of that uh, moisture. So it, it's all about the rain and definitely a flood threat. So remember, you know, flood waters can rise fast. Um, they also have sharp objects in them. So if you end up in one of these situations where there is flooding in your neighborhood, just make sure um, you don't walk into it. I know that seems very duh of a uh, advice, um, but just make sure you, you stay smart out there and always stay safe as well. Well, so before the uh, arrival of any tropical system, you want to make sure to get that information from official sources. Now, let's get into more detail here. Um, outside of the bare facts, we'll talk a little bit about the science behind this because, of course, we have our troughing. Uh, and upper level winds, yeah, that does show a little bit of shear. Actually, right here, you can see this wind barb where I'm just kind of boxing it out. It's 20 to 30 knots over this uh, tropical trough. That's a lot of shear. Then you have your kind of monsoonal gyre where the low level winds are actually coming in from the southwest. But look at all these wind barbs kind of coming in from the north, just like that right there, too. You have this right here. That provides a lot of shear. Now, one thing it does provide is shear. So if you have that, you're not going to have significant tropical formation. But you could have localized stronger storm cells and even some localized severe flooding, too. So there's a lot going on here. And that's why I said I don't expect tropical systems, but definitely heavy rainfall and stability, frequent lightning. And maybe you might get some spin-up tornadoes on top of all of that, too. I mean, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, there's definitely that potential. Here's a look at the ECMWF guidance. Really doesn't show anything terribly tight. While the uh, ECMWF spaghetti plots kind of show our, you know, our first low rate in there. Even indicates a secondary one right there. And then we have our monsoonal gyre, which a high chance of that deepening down to about 980 hectopascals right there. So all that flow rounding the West Pack high and just bring in a whole abundance of uh, rainfall across the western pacific here so we could take a closer look at our forecast for davao where yeah you got showers every day uh same for Cagayan de oro really mindanao gonna be looking at that flow continuing to dominate temperatures pushing into the 30s a little bit cooler along the coast in shargao where you have scattered showers saturday sunday monday tuesday wednesday highs into the high 20s uh, especially Monday, I think it's just going to be a, a rained out type of day if you got travel plans to Shargo. Uh, while Cebu scattered showers as well, temperatures into the lower 30s. Now, I do want to show you the broader picture because, um, of course, we have our tropical systems down here. Uh, extending across well the tropics but we also have the rainy season front also known as that mayu bayou front 
which continues to dominate from eastern China, where we've been seeing heavy rainfall, but also into western Japan. In fact, this heavy precipitation has been causing problems into uh, Kyushu uh, over the past 24 hours as well. Some areas are seeing as much as 50 to 100 millimeters. This particular location in western Kyushu, uh, 95 millimeters. Uh, that's just straight up whiteout conditions over the course of a few hours. Report there. You can see some places. Uh, that's actually Kagoshima, uh, the top one right here over the course of 24 hours, seeing about 150 uh, millimeters of total rainfall as well. And like I said, this is, is associated with that rainy season front. Remember, you have the monsoonal flow coming in from the south, taps into that Mayu Bayou front, and then you see these just low pressure areas run across that, associated with the jet stream, just kind of picking up that moisture and instability. The further north this lifts to, the heat builds in too. In fact, over the last about 72 hours, 9,000 people across Japan have been taken to the hospital due to heat stroke. So you get the heat, you get the rain. It's just that time of year. It's it's not on not very pleasant. Here's Tokyo temperatures into the 20s, the 30s there, and uh, got those scattered showers in your forecast so boy there's a lot to talk about in the western pacific i like this graphic because i feel like it sums it up this shows you the waves where the largest waves are with that monsoonal gyre in the south and that new low trying to develop off of the east coast of the philippines and really just the overall flow in the western pacific boy it's a rough day anyways hey um if you want more information, check out westernpacificweather.com. Uh, thanks to our Patreon members, I was able to kind of get that site up and running again and try to add some new stuff. You know anybody that's good at programming, uh, trying to get some good um, weather uh, information in there outside of what I post. But I'm talking about like uh, maybe a website that they could uh, you type in your location. It brings up the weather forecast. It's something simple. I'm just not good at programming, so I'm not sure how to do it. I'm sure somebody would be like, I know exactly what to do. And if you do... Let me know. <laughs> uh, I um, yeah, <laughs> I would like to. I like your help. Uh, big thanks to all our Patreon members, though, our super typhoons and typhoons, everybody that does support this channel. You all are legends in my book, and big extra thanks to Metro Weather's Weatherscape as well. All right, that's all for today. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please let me know. Number one thing, of course, as always, is stay safe out there, friends. I hope you have a good day wherever you are.